Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny, including this odd duck, the QSP Pangolin. Pangolin? Pangolin. Have you ever bought a knife online and then immediately started questioning it? And so you go on YouTube and start looking up videos immediately to validate your purchase. Ah, if that's you, go ahead and smash the like button because you, my friend, are in good company. Today, we're doing a first impressions on this QSP Pangolin, courtesy of the Apex Pass Around Group. Shout out to them. Shout out to David, aka Blade Banter, aka the mad scientists from Orion Knives for making sure that I had one of these to check out. This is a model that came out a couple of years ago and it didn't make a whole lot of noise. And I'm not sure necessarily why, because, well, maybe you can tell. Roll the tape. So immediately when I look at this knife, I cannot help but start drawing comparisons to a very popular knife out there, the Hinderer XM18. Now maybe it's the really, really prominent pocket pecker. Uh, maybe it's the scalloping and chamfering on the handle scales and the way that you have this slight bend in the handle scales themselves. Or maybe it's the fact that this knife just demands that you hold it a certain way or, or else. I'm not sure. You see, when the Apex Pass Round Group said, hey, do you want to check this out? I said, yeah, absolutely, because I truly want to check out everything, not just the knives that I think are going to be cool. I want to check out absolutely everything. I'm a knife nut first and foremost, and something that I've found during my time checking out knives is, is that you can't judge a book by its cover. There are knives out there that you will look at and then immediately think, nah, I'd never like that. Then you pick one up from a buddy or you hold someone else's and you decide that you really like it. This is one of those knives that if I saw it online, I don't think that I would necessarily go for it. Um, and it's ironic because if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a massive fan of Spyderco knives. Now Spyderco knives to the uninitiated are hideous. And that was my first impression rather was why is everyone crazy about those knives? They look terrible. And then I found myself thinking the same thing when I saw this knife. My original thought was, why would you shape a blade like that? It's, it's a drop point looking pelican looking thing. I've had this for a couple days now. I know, I know. I didn't bother with an unboxing, but I didn't bother with an unboxing because there's nothing too terribly special about the box. So instead, I was like, you know, it's time to carry a knife that I wouldn't normally carry and see if I can change my opinion of it over the span of a few days. And here's the thing. As odd as this knife appears, it is starting to grow on me. There are a couple things that we need to talk about, though. Thing number one, the weight. Now, I've already done this, but instead of telling you, I'd much rather just show you. The Pangolin weighs 5.26 ounces. These are G10 scales with a steel liner and D2 blade, which for a $50, sub $50 knife, you know, that's not bad, but it is heavy. And just to give you some comparison, look how much my full titanium Grant Gripper weighs. They're very close, but the difference is that this is full metal and titanium. And this is mostly G10. Next thing we need to talk about is this pocket clip. Now, you know how I feel about stamped pocket clips. I'm not a fan of stamped pocket clips, but most of the time it's because they do this thing where they go up and down into the spoon and then they just kind of level out and do a plateau. Uh, for example, Demco 8015. Stamped down into the spoon, then level. 
This is more of a ski jump. It doesn't level out, and so surprisingly, it actually fits pretty well in the pocket. Now, if you were to go ahead and wonder, what about the carry profile? It, it, it looks a little awkward. Well, let me tell you, it is. So there's the Pangolin, and here's a Manix 2. They're actually very close in carry profile because if you were to layer these over each other, you'll notice that the high point on the Pangolin is very similar to the high point on the Manix 2. It's just a little further back. If this was an odd duck race, which duck do you think would win? I'd probably put my money on Spyderco because they usually win. Uh, to give you some more comparisons, what about up against the Spyderco Para 3? It's gonna be quite a bit longer than the Para 3. Carry profile, again, very similar. And even to the point where if you look at the handle scales, the handle scales are actually a higher carry profile than the blade itself, meaning that it's you're going to feel it in your pocket. Now, aside from the width, let's go ahead and check out the thickness. What about the thickness? It's quite a bit thicker than a Spyderco Manix 2. Now, I don't necessarily dislike that, and I mentioned this in a previous video, but the thicker the handle scales, the more comfortable it feels in the hand. And they did a really great job on this. You see, this model originally came out a few years ago, and there are no hot spots that I can think of. I mean, even the pocket clip with its little ski ramp there, that's not really sticking into my hand all that much, if, it, if at all, I, I don't even notice it. Now, could I go out and, and buy another clip for this? Probably not. It's a $50 knife, and I don't know anybody that makes aftermarket clips for it. So it's a good thing that this isn't that bad of an iteration when we're talking about stamped pocket clips because a lot of stamped pocket clips are just bad. And I'm not going to be shy about that. Uh, you look at this knife and you might think, well, I mean, it looks like you could do, you know, it looks like you could do some damage with this thing. How, how big is it? Well, let's go ahead and check that out. From tip to butt, because that's how we do here on this channel, it is just shy of nine and three quarters inches long. So about 9.75 inches long, or excuse me, 8.75 inches long with a blade that is about four inches long. That's a pretty hefty sized blade. So if you're a fan of bigger knives that gives you plenty of real estate on the handle scales, this will definitely do the trick. Again, it's not uncomfortable to hold by any stretch. Your thumb, if we're speaking of the ergos, your thumb naturally rests here on the top. And I say naturally because it would be unnatural to hold it like this. Uh, furthermore, something that they missed out on is a front finger choil. And while you might think that that flipper bar would be comfortable to rest your finger on, it's not, and I don't suggest it. So here's your grip. Could you, go, could you do reverse grip if you needed to really jam this into something? Yeah. You can do that, it's fine in reverse grip, but it's not very comfortable in reverse grip because these scallops and the chamfering is really meant for this. So if this is your primary way of holding a knife, and for most people it is, I think that that will be ultimately fine. Uh, another key thing that I'm a big fan of is single-sided captive pivot. That is awesome. And there's not a ton of billboarding on the blade. You do have QSP right here, and then on the flipper tab, it says D2, in case you forgot, the quality of the steel that you bought. Now, QSP does a fine job of making sure that their knives are built well and they're built to tolerances. When I got this out of the box, I could tell that it sat on the shelf for a minute because it felt like it hadn't seen lube in a long time, since the Nixon era. And so immediately, the first thing I had to do when I, when I got this was take it apart. Hit it with some lube, because all things are better with lube and put it back together and now it is actually very very smooth it's almost mechanical because it doesn't guillotine shut but that's fine because it allows you to actually have the control there now when i say that this reminds me of a 
of a of a hinderer XM18 or XM24 or whatever. Uh, it has less to do with the locking mechanism and more to do with the way that these handle scales are built and how forward facing this blade is. Uh, it's not flat out, it's almost at a bit of an angle. And that's actually fine for this drop point because it allows you to really get into whatever you're cutting. Um, it seems like it'd be really good for some decently controlled cuts and the spine of the blade, while it is thick, they give it a nice long swedge here at the top, which is going to relieve some cutting pressure from whatever you're cutting. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a cut test real quick. Now I have not sharpened this. So let's see, how does it cut? Yeah, it, it'll cut. This is, I mean, your, your sticky notes, your Amazon packages, whatever. You're, you're not going to have an issue when it comes to cutting anything with this from the factory. QSP, as you know, uh, they have great fit and finish. So who is this for? And I know that I'm really stretching trying to answer this question, only having it for a couple days now. But if I had to, to really suggest this knife to someone, I would say that this is for the guy that uses their knife a lot, that doesn't want to spend a ton of money on something that they're just going to beat up, doesn't need a whole lot of uh, ways to open a knife, just wants to get down to business, and just wants something that it, it doesn't matter how hard they beat on it. You see, at the $50 and less price point, the beautiful thing about a knife like this is that even if you break it, you could just go back and buy another one because 50 bucks is not something to cry over when we're talking about knives that you can use every day. The biggest difference I've found in cheap knives comes down to the fit and finish. There are a lot of cheap Chinese knives out there where you'll notice that the action it seems forced. Like you have to put some wrist into it when you're flicking with the, the, the tab or you check out the centering on the blade and it just looks off center. Whereas this one you can tell is not off center. Uh, this one actually looks good. Or you have a free floating pivot with screws on both sides and you'll never get it right. That's not the case with this. This is one of those knives where while it might not be for everybody, it's definitely for somebody. And it kind of makes me sad thinking about the fact that, you know, this obviously sat on the shelf for a couple years because this is definitely a knife that feels good to carry. Is it on the heavier side? Yes. And I say heavy because, remember, this is G10. I, for a weight like this, I do expect, you know, full metal scales, but that's not the case. A lot of that has to do with the size of this blade being four inches. But then I look at things like the swedge at the top, how polished the, the corners are, the thought that went into the perfect way to hold this knife. In this position, it's natural. It's natural and it feels like you're going to be able to get the job done. The blade on the spine stays nice and thick all the way to the tip, which means that if you're going to do some dumb knife guy type stuff with this, like, you know, chip through some drywall, or maybe somebody forgot their ice pick and you need to crush that up, I mean, this will get the job done. And being D2 means that it's got some decent edge retention and it's not going to be terribly hard to sharpen. I know that it, everyone used to say that D2 is terrible to sharpen. D2 is easy to sharpen. I've never had an issue sharpening D2. And I think that this is a great user knife. And if you're a fan of bigger knives, this knife is for you. I am going to do a grail or garbage review on this after I've had it for another week and a half. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Other than that, my friends, that's all I've got for you today. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, there's a button for you as well. And if you want to see more videos and more content just like this, make sure to smash the subscribe button. I will catch you on the flip side.